I want you to try a thought experiment with me. As you drive down this road, surrounded by the metal shell of your car, moving through the veins of the city, I want you to imagine a life where you never have to move again. Imagine a world where you never have to work. You never have to wake up to an alarm clock. You never have to stress about a paycheck or groceries or rent. Picture a home that is always kept at the perfect temperature. Let's say 68 degrees. Not too hot, not too cold, just comfortable. Imagine that every time you are hungry, the finest food just appears. You do not have to hunt for it. You do not have to cook it. You do not even have to ask for it. It is just there, endless, unlimited. There are no predators in this world. No bosses to yell at you, no enemies to attack you, no viruses to make you sick. It is a fortress of absolute safety. If I offered you a ticket to this world right now, would you take it? It sounds like paradise, doesn't it? It sounds like the utopia that humanity has been chasing for thousands of years. The end of struggle, the end of suffering. But what if I told you that this paradise has a different name? What if I told you that in 1968, a scientist named John B. Calhoun built this exact world. He created a perfect, disease-free, predator-free city with unlimited resources. He didn't build it for humans. He built it for mice, and he called it Universe 25. He wanted to answer one simple question. What happens to a society when all its problems are solved? What happens when life becomes too easy? The answer he found is something that might make you look at the high-rise apartments passing by your window right now with a shiver of fear. Because within 600 days, this paradise didn't just fail, it turned into a slaughterhouse. The mice stopped acting like mice. Mothers ate their babies. Males turned into mindless violence. And a strange group called the Beautiful Ones simply stopped living, even though they were still breathing. Tonight, on the journey home, we are going to open the doors to Universe 25. And I have to warn you, this isn't just a story about mice. It is a mirror, and the reflection, looking back, might just be us. Stay with me, because by the end of this drive, you might realize that the traffic you are sitting in right now is the only thing keeping you sane. Let's go back in time. The era is the late 1940s and 1950s. The world was terrified, but not of war. They were terrified of numbers. Cities like New York, Tokyo, and London were exploding. The human population was climbing so fast that scientists were screaming about a population bomb. The fear was simple. We are going to run out of food. We are going to run out of water. We are going to starve to death. But John B. Calhoun, an ethologist working at the National Institute of Mental Health, had a different theory. He looked at the way cities were built and he thought, what if the danger isn't starvation? What if the danger is the crowd itself? So, in a quiet laboratory in Maryland, he decided to play God. He constructed a box. But calling it a box does not do it justice. It was a metropolis for rodents. It was a square pen, roughly nine feet by nine feet. The walls were high, made of galvanized steel, so no one could climb out. The floor was covered in clean corn cobs. Built into the walls were four massive high-rise structures. Mesh tunnels led up to nesting boxes, 256 apartments in total. Calhoun did the math carefully. Physically, this universe could comfortably hold 3,840 mice. That is 3,840 individuals before it would feel even slightly cramped. He designed a water system that could never run dry. He designed food hoppers that could feed thousands without ever emptying. He eliminated the weather. He eliminated the hawk, the cat, and the trap. It was the Garden of Eden. In July of 1968, he introduced the first residents. Four pairs of mice, four males, four females, the Adams and Eves of this new world. Now, I want you to pause and think about your own life for a second. Think about the early days of a relationship or the first week at a new job. Everything feels full of potential, right? That is exactly what happened here. This was phase A, the striving period. The mice explored. They realized there were no threats. They realized they were in heaven. They began to nest. For the first 104 days, it was quiet. But then, 
the first babies were born. And because there was no disease and no predators, every single baby survived. This takes us to phase B, the explosion. The population began to double every 55 days. 100 mice become 200, 200 become 400, 400 become 800. It was exponential growth. It was the American dream on steroids. Big families, big houses, plenty of food. But right here, unnoticed by the mice, the first crack in the utopia appeared. And it is a crack that might look familiar to anyone living in a modern megacity. Even though there were plenty of empty apartments on the other side of the pen, the mice didn't spread out. They insisted on crowding together in certain popular areas. Why? Because they are social creatures. They wanted to be where the action was. Does that sound like us? Why do we jam ourselves into packed subway cars or pay half our salary for a tiny apartment downtown when there is plenty of space in the countryside? Because we crave the pulse. We crave the connection. But in Universe 25, that craving was about to become a curse. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so they are crowded. So what? Humans live in crowded cities and we are fine. Are we? Hold that thought. Because what happened next in Calhoun's box suggests that there is a breaking point. A point where the mind simply cannot handle the number of interactions it is forced to make every day. Imagine your phone ringing every 10 seconds. Imagine someone bumping into your shoulder every time you turn around. Imagine never, ever having a moment of true silence. That is what started happening in phase C, the stagnation phase. The population hit 620, still far below the maximum capacity of 3,800. There was still plenty of physical space. There was still plenty of food. But the social space was gone. Usually, in nature, when a young mouse grows up, he has to leave the nest. He has to go out into the scary wilderness, fight for a territory, and build a home. It is hard. It is dangerous. But it gives him a role. It gives him a purpose. In Universe 25, there was no wilderness. There was nowhere to go. The young males grew up ready to fight for their place in the world. But the older generation, the baby boomers of the mouse world, were still there. They hadn't died off because there were no predators. They were healthy, strong, and holding on to all the prime real estate. So, the young males were rejected. They were pushed out of the nests. They ended up clustered in the center of the pen, the floor of the universe. This is where the society began to rot from the inside out. Calhoun called this phenomenon the behavioral sink. It is a term that describes the collapse of behavior due to overcrowding. And it wasn't just about space. It was about roles. The rejected males in the center of the pen had nothing to do. No jobs, no families to protect, no territory to defend. So they became hyper-aggressive. They would attack each other for no reason. A ripple of violence would tear through the crowd. One mouse bites another, and suddenly a whole group is fighting. They were covered in scars and fresh wounds. But here is the twist. They didn't fight to win. They just fought to fight. It was senseless, directionless rage. Does that remind you of anything? Perhaps the senseless road rage we see on highways? Or the anonymous, venomous anger we see in comment sections on the internet? People lashing out, not because they have a goal, but because they are frustrated by their lack of control? But the males weren't the only ones changing. Up in the nesting boxes, the females were abandoned. The dominant males were too exhausted from fighting off the crowds to protect the nests. So, the mothers had to become the warriors. They started fighting off intruders. But the aggression changed their brain chemistry. A mother would fight off an intruder. And then, in her confusion and rage, she would turn around and attack her own babies. She would kick them out of the nest before they were weaned. Or worse, she would simply abandon them. Calhoun documented mothers who would move to a new apartment and leave a litter of babies behind to starve, even though the food hopper was full just 10 inches away. The maternal instinct, the most basic, primal force in nature, was broken. Not by hunger, but by social stress. Now, if the story ended here, it would be a tragedy about violence. But violence is loud. Violence is obvious. What came next was far more terrifying, because it was silent. And this is the part of the story that I want you to really listen to. If you are drifting off, come back to me. 
because this is the part that predicts the future of humanity. Amidst this chaos of rape, violence, and child abandonment, a new group of mice emerged. They looked different. They didn't have scars. Their fur was sleek, groomed, and shiny. They were physically perfect. Calhoun called them the beautiful ones. These were the mice who looked at the chaotic society around them and decided, I am not playing this game anymore. They withdrew, completely. They found isolated corners of the upper apartments. They barricaded themselves in, and they did only three things. They ate, they slept, and they groomed themselves. They did not fight, they did not court females, they did not try to reproduce, they did not help anyone, they did not harm anyone. They were narcissism in its purest form. They turned inward. Their entire world became their own body. They became obsessed with their own comfort and their own appearance. They were biological machines that consumed resources but contributed absolutely nothing to the species. And here is the chilling part. The beautiful ones were the healthiest mice in the universe. They were smart, they were strong, but they were socially dead. Thanks for watching. They had lost the capacity to deal with friction. They couldn't handle eye contact. They couldn't handle a challenge. As the violence in the pit eventually burned itself out, the beautiful ones took over. The population became dominated by these beautiful, hollow ghosts. And because they didn't mate, the birth rate dropped and dropped and dropped. On day 600, the last mouse was born in universe 25. After that, the population crashed. Even when the population dropped back down to low levels, even when there was plenty of space again, the beautiful ones did not go back to normal. They had forgotten how to be mice. They had forgotten how to court, how to fight, how to raise young. They lived out their long, selfish lives, and then they died. And the species went extinct. Not with a bang, but with a whimper. Take a deep breath. I know, it is heavy. You are probably thinking, okay, Rodeo, that is a creepy story about mice. But we are humans. We have culture. We have art. We have reason. We are not rats in a cage. Are we sure about that? Let's look at the facts. Let's look at the world you are driving through right now. Calhoun predicted that when a society has no physical struggle, it faces a spiritual death. Look at Japan. Right now, there is a phenomenon known as hikikomori. Government estimates suggest there are over 1 million people in Japan who exist as modern-day beautiful ones. These are young men and women who refuse to leave their bedrooms. They have withdrawn from society. They rely on their parents or the state for food. They spend their days sleeping or surfing the internet or playing video games. They have zero interest in careers, zero interest in dating, and zero interest in marriage. They have food, they have safety, they have shelter, and they have chosen extinction, and it is not just Japan. Look at the birth rates across the entire developed world. South Korea, the United States, Western Europe. In the 1960s, families had three or four kids. Today, in many advanced nations, the birth rate is far below the replacement level of 2.1. Why? Is it because we are starving? No. We have more calories available today than any king in history. Is it because of predators? No. We are safer than ever. It is because of social stress. It is the high cost of housing. It is the hyper-competition for status. It is the exhaustion of living in a digital behavioral sink where we are constantly bombarded by the noise of millions of other people on social media. We see the chaos. We see the arguments on Twitter. We see the pressure to be perfect on Instagram. And like the beautiful ones, many of us are starting to say, I don't want to play anymore. We order our food on an app so we don't have to talk to a waiter. We date on screens so we don't have to face rejection in person. We curate our online avatars to look perfect, grooming our digital fur, while inside, we feel empty. Calhoun said something profound about his experiment. He said there are two deaths. The second death is the death of the body. That is inevitable. But the first death is the death of the spirit. It is the death of the struggle. It is when you lose the will to connect, to build, and to overcome. The mice in Universe 25 died the first death long before their hearts stopped beating. So, why am I telling you this? Am I trying to depress you on your drive home? Absolutely not. I am telling you this because I want you to survive. I want you to look at the frustration in your life differently. That traffic jam you are sitting in? That difficult project at work? That argument you had with your spouse? 
that goal you are struggling to reach? Do not hate those things. Those struggles are the proof that you are alive. They are the friction that keeps your spirit sharp. They are the antidote to the beautiful one syndrome. We are human beings. We are built to solve problems, not to sit in a box and eat free pellets. So here is my challenge to you tonight, a call to action to save your own humanity. Don't withdraw. When you get home tonight, don't just retreat into your room and scroll through your phone like a zombie. Engage. Ask your partner how their day was and actually listen. Play with your kids, even if you are tired. Call that friend you have been ignoring because it felt like too much effort. Choose connection over comfort. Choose the messy, complicated, stressful reality of love and work over the perfect, silent isolation of the cage. And if you want to keep your mind sharp, if you want to keep exploring the deep, sometimes dark, but always fascinating truths of our world, then make sure you are subscribed to Rodeo. Hit that subscribe button right now. It is a small action, but it says, I am still here, I am still learning. Turn on notifications. Join us on the morning shift and the journey home. Let's make sure that we never, ever stop struggling for a better understanding of ourselves. Universe 25 was a tragedy for the mice, but it is a warning for us. The road ahead of you is open. You have a destination. You have a purpose. You are not a mouse. You are the driver. Take a deep breath. Feel the wheel in your hands. That is control. That is life. Drive safe. Stay human. And I will see you on the next ride. This is Rodeo, signing off.